I welcome everybody who is interested in science. And if you don't have any experience in neuroscience, but want to grasp the main idea of some cool research, stay tuned, because today I will briefly review top three papers that according to the huge review published in 2017 were the most influential papers in the area of basic neuroscience. The reviewed papers were taken from the online scientific database Web of Science starting from the year 1945. The researchers sorted the papers based on their scientific citation count, so how many times the paper had been cited, and also by normalized count, which is the citation count received during the first 10 years after the publication divided by neuroscience publication count during that period of time. I view this normalized scientific citation count as a kind of a measure of the influence of the paper in the field in that time. And now we are going to the top three. Let's get this race going. At the third place, we have a paper published in 1987 in scientific journal Nature by the group from ENS Institute in Paris, France. This paper revealed a new role of the amino acid and a neurotransmitter in glycine. Let's take a look at it. So, neurotransmitters in the vertebrate central nervous system are commonly uh, placed in two separate categories. The ones that inhibit this neural signaling, inhibitory neurotransmission, and the ones that promote neural signaling, excitatory neurotransmission. So previously, glycine was shown for its inhibitory purposes. When glycine receptors are activated, chloride ions enter the cell, causing the inhibition of the neural signaling. Now, imagine the surprise when the researcher found that essentially the same amino acid, lysine, is also necessary for the activation of the excitatory transmission, regulated by so-called NMDA receptors. Why we should care about these receptors, we will talk later. So, in summary, this paper demonstrated that the same neurotransmitter can participate in the excitatory and inhibitory neurotransmission, therefore challenge the previous strict separation of neurotransmitters into excitatory and inhibitory families. Whoa! Also, the increased NMDA excitatory neurotransmission is assigned to the therapeutic usage of glycine in the neuropsychiatry, for instance, in schizophrenia treatment. At the second place, we have a paper published in journal Neuron in 1988 from a researcher affiliated with Stanford University, California, the US. It is important to mention that this is a review paper, meaning that it summarizes and conceptualizes practical findings published in the other papers. The references used in this paper came from the many groups around the world, covering the period of time of nearly 30 years. Okay, let's go to the paper. In this specific case, the topic was around glutamate excited toxicity, meaning that the excitatory neurotransmitter glutamate, which is a crucial component of our neural cell communication, when present in the excessive amounts in the extracellular space, will cause the neural cell damage. This is why it's named excited toxicity. Excited because glutamate is an excitatory neurotransmitter, and toxicity because in the excessive concentration it causes toxic effects. It's tough to get any more obvious than that. Dysfunctional glutamate signaling can negatively alter brain function. Alterations such as increased release of presynaptic glutamate, the direct release of glutamate from glial cells, or an impaired ability to clear glutamate from the extracellular space can lead to excessive excitation of glutamate receptors. Too much glutamate receptor excitation can have neurotoxic effects. In the paper, the author discussed the potential involvement of the calcium intracellular signaling in the process. Specifically, high glutamate concentration in the extracellular space will cause an influx of calcium ions into the cell, which in turn will uh, cause enzyme activation that directly or indirectly will destroy cellular structure. Why it is important? Because excited toxicity is directly linked to the neurodegenerative disorders such as Alzheimer's disease, ALS, Parkinson's disorder, as well as other brain injuries such as stroke and spinal cord injury. Everything is connected, that it's all part of the same subject. And is implicated in various diseases, including ataxias, ALS, neurocognitive diseases, including Alzheimer's disease, and neuropsychiatric disorders, including mood and anxiety disorders. This paper summarized more than 30 years of the research and gave an important avenue for understanding of the biological mechanisms governing brain injuries and neurodegenerative disorders.
And the winner is... And the Oscar goes to... The paper published in Nature in 1984 from Ines Institute, Paris, France. This paper has revealed a vital part of the working mechanisms of NMDA receptors, which, as we already discussed, are the receptors govern excitatory neuron transmission. Specifically, uh, the paper revealed the block of NMDA receptors by magnesium ions under the resting condition, which means that if glutamate, an excitatory neurotransmitter, binds to an M NMDA receptor, it won't be enough for the ions to flow through this receptor, since magnesium is still blocking it. Thus, you also need to remove this magnesium ion, and this is what is a depolarization and increase of the electrical charge inside the cell does. It repels these magnesium ions. Okay, but why this mechanism is important? Because the functioning of NMDA receptors is at the basis of synaptic plasticity, which is the strengthening or weakening of the connection between neural cells based on the incoming signals, or practically speaking, your experience. These changes in the strength of neural connections are roughly speaking the physiological mechanism for learning and memory. In one sentence, this paper laid the foundation for further understanding of the mechanisms governing learning and memory. That is awesome. Really awesome. Okay, what is your opinion about this type of ranking? Do you think it provides equal conditions for the paper from the past and from today? Do not hesitate to leave your impression and the salt in the description below. And sure, do not forget to subscribe to the channel. Okay, that was it. I really hope you liked the video and I hope to see you soon. Bye bye.